Hello and welcome to Art Talks, a program put together by Open Concept Gallery to educate the community in contemporary art. Art Talks will provide a way for artists to discuss and promote their work to an audience of art lovers. Through thoughtful interviews and exciting art news, conversations about art will flourish locally. Hi, my name is Bridget and I am here today with Tom Post, artist and professor of painting at Kendall College of Art and Design. Hi Tom. Hi Bridget. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, how are you? Great. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and how you got started as an artist. Um, I was born and raised here in Grand Rapids. I've lived here my entire life and uh, I went for my undergraduate degree at Kendall College and both for my master's degree as well. So can you tell us a little bit about your work? Um, are, what medium do you work in? What are your techniques and processes? Sure, I'm, um, I'm a painter, so I work with oil paints and various mediums and things. And for the work that I'm submitting for Art Prize, um, there, there's, a, there's, a very, there's a very specific process that I use, starting with um, photographic references and then digitally kind of tweaking them so I get the right values and contrast that I want in my reference material. And then I do the drawing on canvas with graphite sticks and begin to layer in the values achromatically, meaning just plain in black and white and grays, until I get the structure, the values, you know, the forms and volumes and things that I want. And then at that point is when I, and I'm working from um, black and white reference materials, it's that point that I begin to apply the layers of color very thinly and kind of glaze them up. And I'm, I'm doing that more um, based on theory and in, in intuitively on color theory and things because again my reference image I'm using for values and contrast but I'm building up the colors more based on just kind of like my feeling about them. So can you give me a specific example of someone then that you have painted and why you chose them? Out sure. Of all the other influences you have? Yeah absolutely one of the um, one of the uh, pieces I'm going to be using in Art Prize this year is a is a painting of Lydia Launch who was with a you know a, a kind of a small band in New York City in the 80s called Teenage Jesus. Anyway, and she did acting and she was, you know, she was kind of a multidisciplinary artist. But um, I've read a lot of interviews with her and uh, listened to a lot of the music and things and saw a lot of like little film and, you know, just kind of one of those people I just keep going back to as an artist and kind of getting um, inspiration and uh, insights from and those types of things. And it's funny, you know, it just kind of cracks myself up that all of a sudden you know I'm dealing with these people and I look back at some of it and it's like wow 15 20 years old now and it doesn't seem it seems like it's still so new for me mm -hmm. but um, I don't want I don't want to let go of that and I think that's why this series has been so inspirational for me is that it, it's constantly moving and constantly in flux in that way mm -hmm. So then do you consider these portraits like a way of sustaining that memory of them or are they maybe a way of memorializing these influences or an homage to them? How would you ca uh, categorize um, them? Yeah, to all of that, okay. Bridget. You know, I think so. But but I think what's what's it's not really trying to like catalog the person or um, create the little Tom altar of these are who you really like. It's more of if it works formally for me, again with the process of painting, and um, having them work, what's really important for me is having them work in multiple pieces together because I'm always in my studio, I'm always moving them, shifting them, making sure that I feel like the values in this piece work with the values in that piece. Um, and really I think one of the, one of the one of the fun things for me about this series is that these these faces and these people and these portraits are you know kind of important to me and they mean something to me but yet they seem almost in a way um, rather ambiguous in who they are they could be some of them could be most anyone off of the street and I really enjoy that aspect about it you know so it's not like um, doing 
Andy Warhol's Elvises and Marilyn's and Elizabeth Taylor's and those types of things, which I love those dearly. Those are great. But uh, these have a little bit more ambiguity to them, which I think is, it, I like it when at Art Prize last year, folks coming up and saying, you know, oh, who are these and why is this and who is this and are these your friends? And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just, it generates a lot of conversation. And I think that's, uh, that's one of the great things about them. Great. Um, what would you want viewers, Art Prize viewers this year to um, take from, from these portraits from your work? Yeah. You know, I really, I'm, I'm a really formal artist. I like, I like the surfaces. I like the way the values and the colors. And you hear me talk about that a lot. And, uh, so I, I hope that people come into the gallery and are able to walk up to them and look at them and just sort of look at the surfaces and look at the layers and, and kind of go, wow, you know, I, I can see the brush marks here and the this and that. But then as they move back, really see how everything sort of models together and becomes a little bit more unified. So I guess I, I would like them to appreciate them on a little bit more of a formal level um, and if they get something else beyond that then I'm really great with that too. Great. Um, if people want to, especially those that are um, just coming to Art Prize and seeing your work for the first time, if they want to find out more about you and your work, is there another way that, that we can find you? Like, um, Yes, I have. Um, the work, I try, to, I try my best to keep <laughs> my work very updated on my website. Um, and, and it is current right now, but I'll, ha I'll have business cards, website addresses, those types of things. Um, if you, I know that I, I have some shows booked for the next year and things, so I'll be there in the gallery talking to people, and you know I, I really welcome that kind of dialogue with folks. So I hope you know I hope it's a good experience that way. Every other year, artists, critics, curators flock to Venice, Italy, to go see what is known as the Olympics of the art world. The Venice Biennale is known as the largest contemporary art exhibition in the world. Members of the art world hope to compete for the prestigious Golden Lion Award. Each Benil, the direction of the art world will change. Styles and trends also, and great talent along the way, hopefully will be found. A record 89 countries are participating in this year's Venice Biennale, 83 of which are also taking part in the group exhibition titled Illuminations, gesturing to the artist's search for enlightenment. The main part of the show can be seen in the various national pavilions located within the Castello Gardens, which feature solo presentations by artists handpicked to represent their countries. The U.S. Pavilion at the Venice Biennale is also a Palladian-style structure built in 1930 by the architects William Adams Delano and Chester Holmes Aldrich. This year, the art team of Jennifer Alora and Guillermo Calzadilla represents the United States of America. The exhibit by Alora and Calzadilla, comprised of five installations, is called Gloria, which literally translated to glory in English, referencing, perhaps, Olympic glory, the glory of art, war, and money, or even glory that has been lost. Even before entering the pavilion, viewers are faced with Alora and Kaladia's first piece, an upside-down army tank seemingly powered by an Olympic athlete running on a treadmill that has been placed on top. Additionally, the pavilion showcases a church organ built upon a fully functioning ATM that produces music each time an individual withdraws money. Incidentally, it is the only working ATM near the Castello Gardens and is almost always in use. Their other pieces include business class airline seats maneuvered by Olympic gymnasts and a tanning bed accompanied by a replica of the Freedom Sculpture from the Capitol Dome. The selection of Laura and Calza Dia represents a couple of firsts for the United States. This is the first time the U.S. Pavilion features a Puerto Rican-based collaborative. Additionally, it is the first time that the U.S. has chosen to be represented by performance artists. Ultimately, it is the U.S. State Department that decides who will represent the country at the Benil, and even though they were well aware that the collaborative's work was chock full of critiques of American values, the decision was made to send the duo to Venice with the help of curator Lisa Freeman from the Indianapolis Museum of Art. The U.S. has not received any recognition at the Benil since the 1990s, Hopefully, Alora and Calz Medea will be bringing home a prestigious Golden Lion Award. The exhibition will be running now until November 27th, at which time the awards will be announced. Hello, my name is Bridget, and I am here with Dawn Rowe, who's joining us via Skype. She's an artist uh, currently in Asheville, North Carolina. 
Hello, Don. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and how you became an artist? I'm from Sault Ste. Marie originally, grew up in Midland. And um, how I got started as an artist is, um, well, it kind of took a while, actually. I was um, a non-traditional student, went back to finish my undergrad a little later in life, in my sort of late 20s. I had a sister and brother that were very artistically inclined growing up, so that had a pretty big influence on me. But um, when I moved out to Portland, Oregon, to um, just to live in my 20s, I ended up going to a school there and working with an instructor that had a pretty big influence on me and um, got my BFA in photography and went straight away to do my MFA in studio art and just kind of was always interested in looking at things photographically though so I just wasn't quite certain about the fact that I would pursue it as a career for until a little bit later in life so. What was it about photography specifically that drew you to it? my interest in the sort of vernacular snapshot photograph and our sort of fascination with that. As a culture, it's something that has surrounded me personally on a daily basis since I was young and I, I really enjoy the response that we have to something that is seemingly so commonplace. The sort of, in my own work, I, well, we can talk about that at some point, the trajectory of it, lately it's landscape, but it originally had to do with just kind of capturing basic, ordinary, everyday moments. And there's something that's pretty fascinating about how that can be transformed in a photograph when, you know, you're literally capturing and freezing time. So that has something to do with it. You mentioned something about landscape is what you're focusing on now. Why don't you tell me more about your work uh, in general, what it's about and what influences it? Yeah, um, lately, it's the subject matter is landscape but that's been a really sort of sticky I guess I could say or interesting area for me to negotiate because obviously landscape has this very huge history within the arts and within um, just just as its own sort of genre but I'm not necessarily a landscape photographer it's not that I have any kind of um, implicit interest in nature, although clearly I do because that's what I've been focusing on for the past about four years. It has more to do with um, the way that time is represented or, or the way that landscape can be thought of as a metaphor for time and the passing of time. But my photographs are very still. It's not as though I'm literally capturing anything. You don't think of it that way, but nonetheless, every captured moment is still a captured moment. And especially if it's something like a landscape, which doesn't necessarily move, if you kind of reactivate that with a moving image and you play around with sort of wind or mist or very sort of subtle things moving through a space, then your um, attention is really drawn to that space differently than it might be in that still photographic image. So oftentimes my videos as well are kind of um, ridiculously slow and still and I, I just kind of play each medium off of one another. Some of the videos are kind of like st uh, moving still photographs. Some contain a little bit more sort of montage cuts and things. And then it's the same with my photographs. So is this the work that you'll be showing for Art Prize? Um, yeah, one of the pieces from a project that I did last year called The Tree Alone, um, a video piece will be shown um, it's called The Tree Alone, part one, two, and three. And it's a three channel video installation. And it's, so that just means it has three um, videos running simultaneously and they're edited to relate to one another. So when something happens in one sequence, something's happening next to it that's meant to relate in that way. It's the same tree, but seen a little bit differently. Um, and there's some sort of very slow, slight movement and the time just kind of loops back into itself. And that quote actually, or that little phrase, the tree alone, was actually from a line in a Virginia Woolf novel called The Waves, which was really influential to how I was thinking about that particular work. And she really, that work was really interesting to me in terms of her way of really poetically talking about the passing of time through, through metaphors of nature. I think the actual quote is something like, the tree alone resisted our eternal flux, for I changed and changed. So I really liked thinking about that metaphor of the, the tree.
Since many viewers may not be aware of that uh, specific metaphor and that reference to Virginia Woolf, what, what do you hope Art Prize viewers in general take from this work? Yeah, that's always a really good question in terms of the intent of the artist and then what sort of um, how much of that is important for the audience to kind of know. Um, I personally think that that metaphor is really kind of simple and one that we just kind of all understand in a very intuitive way. I mean, when you stand in front of it, it is kind of meditative and also a little bit disorienting in a way in terms of how how things are moving and you're looking at three things and they're moving differently. So I'm, I'm hoping that if you're patient, and that's one of the... I don't know if it's a problem or not, but that's one of the things with a lot of my work is it's really slow and it's not really bombastic. It doesn't kind of just hit you. You have to kind of sit there and be a little bit patient and see what what response you have to it. So I'm hoping that people will kind of start to get the sense of that subtlety of the passing of time, um, I hope. I hope so too. Um, is this your first time taking part in Art Prize? It is, yeah. It's exciting. Um, it, worked, it is. It worked out really well. I'm hoping to be able to come up um, for it. It's uh, it would be a good excuse for me to come home for a minute. <laughs> <laughs>
had an extension program, um, College for Creative Studies. So, mm -hmm. and then while I was in high school, um, I uh, worked on my portfolio at CCS and got college credit ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I ended up um, getting my undergraduate degree in fine arts with an emphasis in metals, and then went on to get a, an art education teaching certificate, and then went on to get an MFA in new media from Vermont College. Can you tell me a bit about your work and what inspires you as an artist? Uh, my work for Art Prize is a mixed media piece. Um, I get my inspiration from the lived experience, so I use my own personal experiences to create works of art, and currently I'm working on interactive pieces that involve the viewer, so that the viewer has a chance to connect in their own way to my experience. Mm -hmm. So for the Art Prize project, for instance, um, I started with an image of my daughter, um, because this series of work is a series of 12, and this is the second piece in that series. Art Prize inspired me to create an interactive element. Awesome. Um, I was inspired by Art Prize itself when I heard about it this year um, on how they've incorporated the viewer in the artistic process which um, is something that I've always wanted to do so um, I kind of mixed in my new media by creating an app um, on the App Store it's called the Wish Project um, Heather Kelly Wish Project and you can download that free it has information about the project and then through that app you can submit an anonymous wish and I also created a one-way blog uh, quick response code so that you can easily reach the website and uh, text messaging service. Can you tell us a little bit about the necklaces too to go with your Make-A-Wish Foundation? I started thinking more about work that I connect with as a viewer mm -hmm. and I was visiting the Cranbrook graduate exhibit this year and um, before I entered I paid attention to what pieces I connected with mm -hmm. and I found that I connected with pieces that had a token or something that I could take away from the work. Something that I could attach my own meaning to as a way to remember my experience viewing it. So I um, came up with the idea to create close to a thousand wish necklaces, which also incorporates my metals background. So I'm using uh, silver plate and creating silver necklaces with a crystal dot for the eye, and I'm giving away close to a thousand of those. And on the back of those is a, a sticker with the information on how to submit your wish. How do you hope viewers will, um, will interpret your artwork? How do you think they will take it at Art Prize? I hope viewers will interpret my work as a way that an artist is reaching out to the public um, and opening up, opening themselves up, using a personal experience, sharing it with others, and then asking others to share a personal experience with me. And then also as a way to give back. So I'm hoping the viewers do take into account the Make-A-Wish Foundation and my opportunity to use my lifelong passion to help others. So you said this is your first time at Art Prize, correct? Yes. So what does Art Prize mean to you? I first heard about Art Prize this year when we had a guest speaker. I happened to be an art teacher at uh, Troy High School in Michigan, and uh, we had a guest speaker from uh, Kendall College of Art and Design, and he was giving his lecture and explaining Art Prize. It was actually the first time I'd heard mm -hmm. of it. <laughs> Inspired me to look at the website and um, sort of evolved, I think, as all things do, that I became interested in it, decided to create the work was created for Art Prize with that in mind. Um, and I think when you have a purpose like the art prize uh, contest or other or a gallery show that you're working on that that drives your work as well. So you're also a mother, a teacher, and you know so much. You have so, such a great influence on so many levels. How? What role does art play in your life personally? Art is something that. I have to do. It's not a choice. It's um, I have more ideas actually than I'll ever have time to create. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not the type of artist that wants to paint and needs to think about what to paint or what to create. I'm more the artist who um, needs to create just as I need to breathe or eat. It, it's an impulse or something that drives me, or fuels me. What advice do you have for young artists out there who try to make it in this world? At so much, so many different things you can say, I'm sure. Uh, I've been teaching for a long time. I've been teaching for 16 years, and I've had uh, students. I started at the elementary level in Troy, and I've had students uh, go through my art program up through the high school. So I've had the opportunity to establish really intense relationships with a lot of those students, and I think. The best advice I can give them is always believe in what you're doing. Don't worry about what other people think or what grade a teacher gives you. Believe in yourself, have passion in your work, and you'll succeed. How do you feel your creativity affects you as a mother? 
that's an interesting <laughs> topic. When I first had my daughter, um, I suffered silently with postpartum depression. So um, I took a break from my art. Um, and when I admitted that to myself and others and got help, which mm -hmm. is hard to talk about or admit publicly, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, began, I, <laughs> I began creating again. And That's the first awesome. work that I made was about that experience. And it was called Twinkle. And it won second place in the Michigan Fine Arts Competition. So, um, and my biggest fear in life actually was losing myself to becoming a wife mm -hmm. and mother. So mm -hmm. while I was in grad school, before I was married and before I had mm -hmm. children, I researched uh, the glamorization of domesticity, mm -hmm. women's place in society, and my fear of loss of identity through motherhood. Mm -hmm. So when I became a mother, that fear was real. Yes, and so maintaining my own identity and creating my artwork means more to me than Definitely. words can say. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Heather. Thank you for coming today. I appreciate all your, you know, coming out here. And yes. so excited to be a part of Art Prize. So, thank Good you. Mm -hmm. Art Talks asks, what are your feelings towards street art and graffiti? Should it be revered as art is in a museum or gallery, or is it merely vandalism? First, let's define what is street art. In general, it's an art inspired by the urban environment and it's a democratic form of popular public art not limited to the gallery nor easily collected. Considered by some a nuisance, for others street art is a tool for communicating views of dissent, asking difficult questions and expressing political concerns. A groundbreaking exhibition currently on view at the Museum of Contemporary Art in LA is ready to take on the debate of art versus vandalism and put street art on display with art in the streets. The show follows the history of this popular